So adjuvant endocrine therapy is commonly given to patients with hormone-sensitive breast cancer, but the composition and duration of that therapy has evolved over time. In the past, it was tamoxifen for five years or an aromatase inhibitor for five years, and there were innumerable trials with tens of thousands of patients looking at different durations or different sequences of therapy that at best probably showed there was a modest improvement in outcome, particularly with aromatase inhibitors or with the duration of therapy uh, going to 10 years with tamoxifen or an aromatase inhibitor for seven or eight years. And in order to make those findings, which we commonly use in practice today, it was based on large, large clinical trials. Uh, more recently, with the introduction of targeted therapies in the metastatic disease setting, and by that I'm referring to specifically CD4-6 inhibitors, we saw the improvement in outcome in patients with metastatic disease who had an endocrine agent partnered with a CD4-6 inhibitor. So it became an obvious question to determine whether or not a similar strategy in higher risk patients with early stage disease might result in improvement in outcome. And improvement in outcome in this, in this setting is really referring to fewer recurrences that lead to metastatic disease, which ultimately uh, impacts survival. So there were a number of trials. There were three drugs that have been developed, palbocyclib, ribocyclib, abemocyclib. And as you might predict, there were adjuvant trials in each of those settings. The palbocyclib trials failed to demonstrate an improvement in outcome, and that has largely been dropped. Uh, the next trial, the so-called Monarchy trial, uh, was a, a trial with a bemocyclib, where a bemocyclib in high-risk patients was given for two years, along with endocrine therapy, after which the endocrine therapy would continue. In that trial, in patients who had either higher risk features with um, uh, nodal involvement uh, were randomized either to get endocrine therapy alone or endocrine therapy plus a bemocyclin. And the data from that trial has demonstrated it, that in these high risk patients, there is a sustained improvement in outcome with fewer recurrences. And as follow-up has continued, as all of the patients have come off the two years where they're taking a bemocyclin, we see that continued improvement in outcome favoring the use of abemocyclib in that group. So that's encouraging. Uh, the other trial that was recently reported, but not yet FDA approved, abemocyclib is FDA approved, is the Natalie trial. And in the Natalie trial, the concept is very much the same. Uh, higher risk patients who would get endocrine therapy alone or endocrine therapy plus ribocyclib in this case for three years. And that trial has demonstrated with shorter follow-up that there is an improvement in outcome, fewer recurrences. And the distinguishing things between that this trial and Monarchy is the duration of therapy is longer, three years versus two. It also included a fraction of patients who were node negative, which may not be viewed necessarily as high-risk patients, but they had features that would make them eligible for the trial. So ribocyclib is not yet approved, FDA approved in this setting, so we still only have a bemocyclib. And for the appropriate patient, I would recommend using it today.